As we grapple with the reality of accelerating climate change, we are also becoming increasingly aware that there is no easy solution. Simply speaking, our response must match the complexity of the challenge. And this is clearly demonstrated in the impact of climate change on our food systems. In Southern Ethiopia, I've been working in the region of uh, Awasa uh, on um, ecological pest control uh, practices. What I've seen in that region was an increased variability of the rainfall pattern which had a big impact on the farming calendars. Farmers were planting when they saw the first rain coming and two weeks after there was no rain at all and these uh, changes in the rainfall pattern was actually also impacting the pest and disease communities. Making this region um, actually food insecure and we have a need also of governmental help uh, in some years uh, while well, actually for many years this region was providing food to the older regions of Ethiopia. A crisis such as COVID-19, like any other crisis, always creates hardship. Uh, the argument often is that under these circumstances you, you can't afford agroecology, you, you can't afford sustainability in such a crisis and, and I believe this is, this is utterly wrong. A crisis also offers an, a unique opportunity to, to introduce changes that result in the needed systemic transformation in the way we produce, trade, process, consume and also dispose foods. Agroecology is a proven approach for building resilience at the local level. It improves productivity on the farm, it contributes to better management of natural resources, it links farmers to social networks, to consumers and to institutions that have a stake in transforming our food systems. I worked in countries, different countries in Africa and also in Central America, and my experiences proved that they are feasible. This is a picture from a farmer in Kenya who shows his yields, which he harvests from agroecological uh, production practices with very limited external inputs. Current food systems are often too one-sided focus on increasing yields. The hidden costs and the negative impacts on the ecological system and environmental impacts as soil losses, forest degradations, etc., are often ignored. There's sometimes a, an, an attempt to equate agroecology with traditional knowledge, um, with how things were done in the past. And I think that's a mistake, because if we look at local knowledge, it's actually very dynamic. Farmers are experimenting, they're trying things out, so we should not um, um, think that agroecology is any less modern in terms of its technology uh, than any other aspect. So it, using the 13 uh, principles of agroecology from the uh, HLPE report, we can see that uh, about half of those relate to social aspects like equity, agency uh, within food systems. A lot of policies at the moment are maladapted. They actually incentivize and lock in uh, an industrial type of agriculture and they make it very difficult for people to choose uh, agroecological investment. A second key element is understanding that you need different approaches in different contexts. And this is something which agricultural research as a whole has really not uh, uh, taken the challenge of. So what you actually need is co-creation of knowledge with farmers, farmers adapting to local circumstances, and that requires a completely different relationship between established science and local knowledge. The third element um, is around the need for both vertical and horizontal integration, because uh, there's a missing middle quite often between international and national commitments, those 
uh, key elements at a high level often don't get translated down to action on the ground. And that missing middle is a critical element that needs to be addressed. For me, really, the general need is actually to give the means for these communities to be autonomous, to have the knowledge and understanding, understanding of the causes and the impact of climate change, and to have to, give, to increase actually the capacity of decision making. To make systemic uh, approaches and sustainable solutions work within the planetary boundaries, we need first, in my opinion, time, because it's a behavioral change. We have to look at agriculture, farming and food industries. It includes health and nutrition. It includes income and employment. It includes markets and more and more also digital services in rural areas and also energy aspects. CIZ implements different global programs on behalf of this German ministry and the German government in, uh, in the context of the special initi initiative One World No Hunger. And we are convinced that systemic approaches delivered excellent and sustainable results in very uh, different contexts from India, Kenya to Benin and other countries in Africa and Asia. There's, there are no blueprints that support transitions to, to sustainable food systems, but there must be an agreement on what contains and comprises a sustainable food system. And we need clarity uh, on that and we need that that quickly. Equally important is it is to have a broadly coordinated social movement, uh, because at the end it's each of us being responsible for supporting the shifts towards sustainable agriculture and, and sustainable um, diets. Often, upscaling is understood to mean replication of successful projects. Such an understanding fails to see that it's often the policy environment that prohibits upscaling. And this turns the question of upscaling from a technical exercise of replication into a highly political endeavor. Yet, the good news is that there is a high level of agreement of what constitutes an enabling environment for smallholder-driven climate change adaptation. Secure land rights, accessible extension services, and cooperative approaches for inclusive market access are all examples. And we can build on this joint understanding to create the much needed alliances for change. Together with partners, Team G Research will further strengthen these alliances for change to achieve the necessary policy changes for an enabling environment for smallholder farmers to innovate for climate change adaptation. Yeah.